This is Star Talk. What is gravity fundamentally made up of? Is it a result of some quantum phenomena, or is there any particle responsible for gravity? How fast do the gravitational waves travel through space, and what decides the limit of that speed? A lot of questions. I love there. it when people, because that sounds like they, they, they were burning within him, and he couldn't get to sleep. He and can't he had sleep to, at night. He'd get him off his chest. He's like love pacing. It. I love it. So, uh, so gravity. Before quantum, by the way, Einsteinian gravity was conceived before quantum mechanics was discovered. So Einsteinian gravity is 1916. This is where matter curves space mm -hmm. and objects respond to that curvature. That's what we call gravity. When quantum physics came in, where everything was accountable as a particle wave duality, if you have something that are gravity waves, Einstein predicts the existence of gravity waves, then there ought to be a particle counterpart to that gravity wave. We, they, then we said we'll call it gravitons. Just the same way any particles, any matter at all, will have a wave version of it from a quantum mechanical point of view. So, a gravity waves were predicted to move at the speed of light in Einstein's equations, and if you have a graviton, the propagator of gravity, of gravity, that would also move at the speed of light. So there you have it. Well, now, we've never detected a graviton. We, we, or, or directly have we detected, nor have we directly detected gravity waves. But we have top people working on it. <laughs> There's the, wow. the Laser Interferometric Gravitational Wave Observatory, shortened to LIGO, is okay. a multi-location observatory that uses high technology lasers and interferometers where it it knows the distances between two points in long tunnels <coughs> accurate to like the width of the nucleus of an atom so that if a gravity wave comes across and it slightly jiggles the space between these two measured points it will measure it it will know it, and that will be would, would become the first detection of a gravity wave passing across us. So what makes gravity waves? When gravity changes somewhere in the galaxy. So if you have two stars orbiting and then they collide, then there's a ripple in the gravitational wave continuum that's out there, and that's what you would then see. If a, if, if a star plunges into a black hole, these are disturbances in the gravitational field, and those disturbances are the gravity waves that get measured. So we got top people working on them. We've never measured them, but they're predicted to exist, not only from Einstein's special, uh, 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 general theory of relativity, his theory of gravity, but also from quantum physics. So we can detect but not measure. Did I understand no, that? No, we can detect the existence of gravity, Okay. but well, the graviton that propagates right. it, to know that that is a particle, the gravity wave that tells us when something got disturbed in the universe, those have yet to be directly detected. We have indirectly detected gravitational energy by two pulsars orbiting one another. They have such high gravities at their surfaces, and you orbit them near one another, that that system is unstable. It radiates gravitational energy. Okay. And if you radiate gravitational energy, then the system orbits closer today than it did yesterday. And as it keeps doing it, they orbit closer and closer and closer, and they eventually just collide. The measurement of binary pulsars giving up the gravitational ghost led to a Nobel Prize in physics. Joe Taylor and Russell Hulse. Russell Hulse was one of the Bronx High School of Science's eight Nobel laureates. Nice. Yes. <sighs> that's as many as the country of Spain, by the way. I know. That's, out of, that's, that's crazy. Wow. But. And I now feel more prepared for that category on Jeopardy. Okay. <laughs> 